Hey friends, we are about to get started here soon. So grab yourself a drink, grab your tools, grab your supplies. If you have read the post prior to this Tuesday too, you'll know what to grab in your own stash along with some hollow mesh. And uh, we will get started here very soon. Let me know if audio is coming in loud and clear. Hi everyone! Welcome to Tuesday Tutorials with me, Neelay Patel from Silver Silk and More. I'm the owner, educator, and designer here at Silver Silk and More, bringing you guys fresh, fun ideas using my product called Silver Silk. Um, and this is a time where we get to connect with each other um, every week. This is something that I really look forward to, and I love catching up with my friends out there. Um, so I'm going to say hi to some people as they're tuning in. So we've got Donna Chandler. Hello. Solidarity Empath from YouTube. Um, hi, my friend. And she says I'm coming in loud and clear. So I think we're in good shape there. Marianne, Rosie, um, you're not only a silky, a cane. Um, and I, I believe Sarah Ellis might have a name for her group. But I knew you are trying to find, like, some other name for Sam's Beads group. <laughs> so... Let me know if you come up with a good choice there. Uh, hi, Debbie. Good to see you on here. Joan and Ginger are in the house. My ladies. Um, my crazy ladies, but they're my ladies, no less. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. Um, in fact, we had a conversation today, and it was just great to hear that affirmation of, like, you know, Sometimes we just need to create our own projects that make us happy, which is for me tonight's project. And um, it doesn't matter what you're using. Hopefully people can find some of the same things that I am, but it's more open-ended and I'm giving you guys a, a technique, an idea, um, but I'm using my materials that I feel really passionate about. And sometimes that's all it is at the end of the day. It's just something that I wanna make that makes me feel good. Ah, live wires, that's it. Joan um, just commented on Sarah Ellis's group, the live wires. Yes, makes sense, I love it. Sign me up, I wanna be a live wire. <laughs> Hi Deb, hi Cassandra. Lovely to see you. I just got your stuff all packaged out today, in fact, um, and should be sending it to you soon. I know I need to talk with you about some additional knitted wires and stuff, but we'll get to that later. This is playtime, enough with business, right? <laughs> Guys, if you wouldn't uh, mind giving a quick share to our B groups, our friends, your Facebook wall maybe, just anyone who might wanna catch this that is interested in jewelry making, but also just hoping to have an entertaining evening ahead um, for our one hour Tuesday tutorials, or might be interested in some of the products that I'm gonna be using tonight. Hi, Julie Mercer. Um, my official hat ambassador for our um, upcoming workshop week. I'm pretty excited about that. I just found a snack, by the way, that I cannot live without. Found it at Sprouts. I'm going to post it in the private group later on and um, share with you guys what that snack is. Leanne, good to see you, my friend. Welcome. And Stephanie Howard and Sue DeLay. All you ladies are here. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, hugs and love to all of you guys. So, as I was saying earlier, tonight's project is stuff that I feel passionate about. And one of those companies that I dearly love, um, not only the products are incredible, but the people that run the machine behind it are equally beautiful. And I love representing them, and I love it when I can use their products in my work. And that happens to be Tierra Cast. Um, 
And I'm using a few other products tonight, including Sufflex Wire, but y'all know how I feel about them. They're like part of my family. Um, so obviously I have nothing but great things to say about them, but I want to talk about Tierra Cast a little bit tonight. Just so they're a USA company. They have, uh, they cast pewter and uh, these make these beautiful components and connectors and end cords, uh, cord ends and um, different metal platings, different finishes and different designs. It's just, it's wonderful the lines that they create. Um, and I love that their products do withstand um, a lot of wear and tear over time too. And it, um, it retains its beauty. So I was going through my stash um, because they are kind enough to send out a few samples here and there whenever it makes sense. And um, I've just sort of been like, okay, I'm gonna you know, file this away for later. Um, but finally found a use for it now. And in tonight's tutorial, I thought of using this beautiful button that I found. This is a, you know, I'm not sure if it's a Lotus button. I know for sure it's a button. Um, I can tell you that Beat Place and uh, BeatShop.com carry a lot of Tierra Cast components. So if you like these particular items that I'm using, definitely go check out their stores. They're part of the Great Beat Extravaganza Suite 17, and um, they have quite a few products in their catalog, and happily, uh, Tierra Cast is, is one of them. So I don't carry them, but I know friends that do. Uh, saying hi to a few more people, by the way. <laughs> hi, Vicky Finn. Um, Maggie, or Mimi, is in the house, and Shelly Penny, my friend from Canada that I always get confused with another Shelly from Canada. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here tonight. Thanks so much for joining in, ladies. So I'm gonna be using this button, and I've got this fun little dragon pendant that also came from there. And what I love about their findings and their components is their attention to detail. Because yeah, they could have just decorated this you know, front part, but they actually took the time to design a second side, which is equally detailed and beautiful. If you guys can kind of see what's going on there, but this is a, sort of a sky dragon pattern motif that they have on here, and it is so beautiful and highly detailed. So I was like, you know, if your pendant flip-flops while you're wearing it, you've got two gorgeous sides that you could use for um, really adding that extra oomph to your piece. So if you get a chance, do check these out. And again, beadshop.com or the bead, I think it's beadplace.net is the uh, address for Abby's store. What else? I've got this beautiful connector, um, speaking of connectors, and this is also in a, a sort of dragonfly lotus, sort of that Asian design aesthetic and uh, elements to it. So in both sides, this one's got a koi fish on this side in fact, which I thought was really cool. And some lily pads and lotus again. So two really gorgeous sides that you could use either way. Um, and then I have something that I do carry in my store, which are these cord ends. They're six millimeters in width of the, the inside diameter is probably closer to 5.5, .5, um, but uh, just a perfect fit for the cord that I'll be using tonight. Hi, Trisha and Tracy Alden. Uh, Sherry is also here. Hi, Sherry and Patty and Joy. Oh my goodness, all my friends are here. It's like you guys are just in my house in a way and I get it. I know, I get like a nice little classroom just full of my friends and it's, uh, again, just a pleasure teaching you guys. So thanks for joining in. Uh, so these particular coordinates also have a one and a half to two millimeter hole here at the top. So if we're using beading wire, um, you know, a la soft flex wire, um, of course that's gonna be pretty useful for, for this particular type of end cap. Um, some other materials that are not tiara cast, but equally beautiful is this cool rose bead. Um, I believe I grabbed this from Jesse James Beads back a while ago. I haven't really done with it anything with it until this point, and I was just loving the palette that I'm working in, which is a lot of blues. So I picked out this really cool rose bead from one of the collections, and I just had a couple bicone crystals left over and again, this is all on the materials list. You can catch this on YouTube. Um, for those of you that are tuning in, it's in the descriptions below this video. And for those of you who are from Facebook, I encourage you to go to YouTube after this video tutorial 
and please like and subscribe this video to the to this video, but also to my channel. Um, and there you can have the high definition video for this tutorial. So it'll be much um, much easier to see, in fact, than Facebook. So um, that is a component. I've also got. I'm not going to cover this quite yet because that's going to come later. Um, I've made a little series of loops here that I'll also cover later. But let's get to our bicones because these are little Swarovski crystals. They're actually authentic Swarovski. I did really receive it directly from the company about seven years ago whenever I was working on a different project. Um, and I, like we all do, hoard stuff <laughs> like you guys do. And um, I did, I think, Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting a comment. Can't hear on the Silver Silk page. Um, let me know if, again, audio is coming in clearly, you guys. I feel like some of you are saying you can't hear me, and some of you can are saying that you are. So make sure that the phone is unmuted, too, just in case. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is something that I have been hoarding for a while, and I've been wanting to use them up. So. Oh, okay, Joy says she can hear me. So I don't know, Teresa, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on in the, it might be something related to your audio on your phone maybe, or whatever tuning, what you're, whatever you're tuning in from. So, um, okay, everyone's loud, and, I'm loud and clear. <laughs> That's good. Gotta get my concert voice really in um, so I can project here. Uh, but these are four millimeter bicone crystals. And you're gonna need roughly between 100 and 144-ish, depending on the length of your necklace. Um, I'm making a roughly 24, 22 to 24 inch necklace. So I kind of used up all of mine, but obviously the more crystals you do use, the longer your necklace will become. I will say that the, foot, the three foot length of the hollow mesh, um, is sort of, I guess, the only real cutoff point. And so if you're wanting to do a you know, pretty good size necklace, then you may end up getting a couple of these or um, you might uh, cut it down. But in this case, I think I'm gonna be using up quite a bit of it. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my product, this is a particular type of chain that I carry. Um, the type of chain in general that I carry is a knitted wire jewelry chain and it comes in four different lines. There's a capture chain, which looks like this, which has a filling of ball chain and the chain, um, the knitted wire that's around it has been sort of, you know, um, what am I trying to say here? It's been kind of tightly woven around the ball chain to give a really intricate and detailed chain that's insanely flexible. When I don't um, crush or tighten the mesh, we get what's called hollow mesh. And this is a roughly about five millimeters, give or take, um, size cord of the interior diameter. And as you can see, it's just a nice big giant mesh that you could really fill with leather, with beads, seed beads. Um, I've even used, in fact, my capture chain in one of my demos to um, fill it with. So it's incredibly versatile. I thought about using bicones today. Historically, I've had a bad experience with bicones and hollow mesh um, stuff that I wasn't producing, but now that it's all made in-house, um, I definitely have a lot more say in the, in the type of materials that I'm making. So we're gonna give it another try and see if the bicone crystals will fill in side of the hollow mesh. Hopefully it will, so keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, to get us started, I'm going to first work with the capture chain. Now you do need a little bit because we're going to be using this to actually make our closure for our necklace. So what I did was I just took a double strand end cap, which looks like this in packaging. You get actually two sets. Um, normally this would be used to make a double, a double strand necklace, maybe a bracelet that has two strands as well something like those infinity bracelets that um, that kind of have worked in with silver silk. So I'm using it a little differently this time. 
I am, sorry, if I'm pausing, I'm actually reading some of the comments to make sure uh, that I can, uh, you know, answer you guys. So Camilla is asking, do you have to fill the wide chain? Can you just leave it empty? Oh, good question, Camilla. So I recommend that you do fill it because the wire that is used to create this type of chain, it is the size of human hair. It's very thin, it's 32 gauge, um, and it's insanely flexible. So while I would leave to, love to leave it not filled, the problem is, is that it's gonna cause crushing of the, of the mesh. So if you've got a heavier pendant, you're gonna see a really bad dent in your wire whenever you, you know, go to um, hang it off there. So, and even with wearing it, sometimes your jacket will come right over it and maybe your hand, you know, hits it and it basically will flatten the wire. So it won't retain its shape anymore is really what I'm getting at. Um, so I do recommend that you do fill it just to retain that beautiful round shape that it has. That was a good question though. Okay, so I cut about two inches, give or take, of the capture chain, and I went ahead and stuffed it into my double strand end cap and just created a nice little um, loop here. You've seen me do this with earrings, and if you haven't, again, I recommend checking out my YouTube channel for some of the tutorials that are on there to make this type of component. So I'm gonna set that aside. You can see that I'm sort of fast forwarding through some of these techniques that you guys might already be familiar with. I've got a giant catalog of designs now, and so we're just adding to the beautiful mix here. Okay, so that gets us started. The next thing I wanna do is go ahead and string my bicones. I went ahead and pre-strung all of my bicones onto roughly about three feet of soft flex medium beading wire in silver color. This is what the packaging looks like. And I particularly love the silver for this. And let me tell you why. It's because these crystals are dark on their own, as you can see, um, and they are transparent. So whatever you fill inside of it, it's going to sort of accentuate that color from the inside out. So for example, if you're using a gray colored beading wire, it's going to darken that crystal and um, it sort of loses that sparkle, I think. In some instances, that's perfectly fine. Um, in other instances, I want it to really sparkle, like in this design. So what I did was I used the silver color because it's so bright to really liven up the crystal and give it some more um, life inside of it. So it lightened the crystal, and it's also a very protective wire um, for your jewelry making. It's very strong and the nylon coating is um, perfect so that this wire won't tarnish over time and it won't become brittle or weakened. So knowing what color, knowing how your materials work is also part of the equation of jewelry making, you know, that transparency, what can you do with it to either accentuate and really uplift those colors or do you want to darken and tone down your color so just something to think about whenever you're you're deciding some of these materials um the other thing i did was i went ahead and crimped both of my ends after i was done stringing it so i laid it down i made sure that it was bowing correctly and then i just use a pair of zeron crimpers in fact to just make myself a little crimp at the end this will hold all of my crystals together and um, it won't you know, slide off or um, come off this beading wire as I'm pushing it through the hollow mesh. Okay, um, I just have my basic standard tools. Mostly this comprises of nylon jaw pliers, round nose pliers, a pair of crimpers, and some cutters. Try and keep it really simple these days with, uh, with some of these things. Okay. So I'm going to now, um, since I talked about crimping, I didn't talk about what crimps I use. These are two millimeter crimps from Softflex Wire. I use them exclusively for everything because they are so high-end premium. They have a very thick wall so that whenever you do make your crimp, you know it's not going to become broken in the process of crimping. It's not going to you know, break. Um, including not having a seam in the crimp is also a very huge advantage. Uh, you just know that you have a very solid crimp and making sure that your 
materials do reflect on premium high quality is important for your design work. You want to make sure that these pieces last for a long time. So knowing what material you're using is a, is a key component of really great design work here. Okay. So something I'm going to do is actually create a little loop. This will be used to feed through the hollow mesh uh, whenever I push it through here. And this will cause it to make sure that it goes in the direction of that hollow mesh and that the, uh, okay, so I'm having good luck with this, that the wire doesn't go through anything, any of the hollow mesh there. So that loop is really just a blunt end but I'm going to go ahead and feed this right through, hopefully with, with good luck here. <laughs> oh, that is so beautiful, though. I was thinking that I might have to draw it down, but I don't think I'm going to have to, which is great. If you find yourself with knitted wire that um, is too small in diameter, this can happen with some of the other colors because they're so soft that when they knit, they actually kind of compress a little bit more um, whenever they're being spooled up. So to avoid the hassle of trying to figure out how to get the beads through, um, I just use a little chopstick in through the hollow mesh. Here, I'll demonstrate on this other side. And I got this from some Asian restaurant. I can't remember where. And I get takeout here and there whenever I can. And, and I am one of those people that hoards everything almost. So um, kitchen utensils are definitely one of those things. And I'm glad I did in this case because the chopstick, it's round, it's smooth, just like a dowel rod or a knitting needle. Um, so it's easy to push through and widen that mesh. Um, if you're wanting to, you know, get it a little bit wider for beads to fit in. Um, but you can absolutely, I know I've had some friends use kneading needles, um, dowel rods, if they've got a smooth edge. So just some other things. I just had chopsticks on hand. <laughs> there was no, no secret around that. Okay, and you just kind of work this through gently. I mean, really, it does kind of just snake right over those beads. And again, I've had bad luck with bicones in the past, but I think somehow this, this particular knitted wire seems to work for me today. And we are in that mood of making exquisite high-end looking pieces, especially with silver silk. I don't know what it is, but I've, I've been told many times that this product is very high-end and exquisite, even for its regular price point, which is really great to hear, um, especially with some of the other materials and you know types of chains out there that could be acquired. I'm glad that you guys are still in it to win it with silver silk. And we've only hit the tip of the iceberg on the type of designs that we can do. Lately, I've been exploring lots and lots of hollow mesh projects and um, building that catalog of designs, not only for you guys, but also just for um, just for myself, because I, I find the thrill of designing and um, creating new ideas very, very thrilling, just in a pure selfish reason. <laughs> Ah, Stephanie, will a small dowel rod work? Or dowel work? Uh, I got two chopsticks. I got chopsticks two times and they weren't round. Yeah, definitely don't use the square ones because they are not good for this. So you'll definitely want to look for the round ones. Um, or Stephanie, just grab some knitting needles from Michael's or um, from your local knit store. I think if it were me, I would probably look for knitting needles personally. I think the aluminum ones are going to be your best friend um, in doing some of this stuff. And if you have a way to break off the end, you know, there's like a little metal cap on the end of a knitting needle to stop the yarn from falling through. Like if there's a way to break that off, um, you'll have a perfect little tool on hand for 
sizing knitted wire, this hollow mesh knitted wire. Okay, so as we get further down our mesh here, <laughs> the process becomes really slow and tedious, but we're still, um, it's still, you know, going through very easily. It's just, you know, making sure that I push all this stuff down. And I don't want to waste any of my knitted wire necessarily, so I am sort of just doing it a little bit here at a time. But in the meantime, I can read some comments here. Ginger's making some monkey emojis here. <laughs> I can only imagine what you said, Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce says, all right, Joan and Ginger, behave. I'm trying to listen to Nile. <laughs> oh, you guys are a hoot. Okay, so I'm near the end here, actually. So what I want to do before I cut and, you know, kind of secure all this up is I want to make sure that I've got enough slack here at the end to be able to comfortably um, put my cap and everything over. So. I'm just gonna slide a little bit extra wire down. And then I wanna have about a half inch and I'm just going to press and form that around. This, believe it or not, is gonna stay very secure at the top. I just kind of wrapped it in itself, as you can see. And it just creates a nice little pocket. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. So what I also need to consider is to make sure that this is very, very flexible. If I push this knitted wire over the beads a little too aggressively and not give any sort of slack or extra knitted wire to move around, it's gonna become a very stiff piece. So I wanna make sure that I have just a little bit extra on my end here, just to make it nice and flexible. Now in this case, I am not actually going to use a drop plate for this because I love what it's doing here and I think with the bicone because it's actually a cone shape it's going to keep that knitted wire very cylindrical and it's not going to crush it so I am actually going to leave it as is and just give myself a little bit more knitted wire here just in case and then I'm going to just crush and trim off the end here with some cutters I'm just going to use a pair of um, orange handled flush cutters from Zuron and trim that off. I kind of go in a circular motion around the knitted or around the hollow mesh because I don't want to crush the end of the working piece that I can save. Now the only issue here is, is getting it out <laughs> from, there we go, from that edge there. That little stick, or that little pokey thing wants to go through each of that, of those knit holes. So I have to be careful with that, but it got out pretty, pretty good there. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to kind of bend and form my wire around the crimp or the end of my beading wire there. This is looking very, very silky indeed. You can see the motion and movement on that is brilliant and perfect. And then if I hold it really close, you can see some of that gorgeous detail. That we are using. So again, catching up on, um, on some comments here. Leanne is saying that she used some in her daughter's wedding jewelry for the wedding party. I remember you mentioning that Leanne um, if you get a chance, post them. If, I don't know if you grabbed a picture of either the wedding, um, if it's happened yet, and or some of the bridesmaids and other folks who are receiving this gift. But we would love to see in the Sophie's group. Ah, Debbie is saying so pretty. I thought you wouldn't see how sparkly the beads are through the wire mesh. Yeah, you know, I wasn't sure about that either, to be honest. But again, um, knowing your materials, because I'm using a brighter colored beading wire, that's already going to illuminate those crystals. 
And then the mesh is actually wide enough for those crystals to shine through it, but still adds the subtlety of texture, which is really cool. Okay, so my neck rope is done and I am just salivating over how beautiful it is, really. <laughs> I'm going to stick on my Tierra cast end caps. These are on my website and I think Teresa, my lovely, gorgeous, beautiful brand ambassador has posted some links to uh, some of these products that I'm using tonight. So thank you, Teresa, for doing that. You are my friend, an angel, an angel. There we go. Brilliant. So this is actually going to be the focal point of my necklace, which I'm pretty excited about because I love experimenting with formats. So what we need to do now is sort of design here the rest of this. So I'm going to add a little crystal. And then I'm going to assemble what the focal point of this is going to look like. Now, I used 20 gauge wire to go ahead and create some simple loops. You saw this earlier. Um, and I want to make sure that my loops are facing in the same direction. So these are both face up and not perpendicular to each other as a rosary chain would be. Um, so that's a small design consideration in this case. And I believe the way I had this attached was link, rose, pendant, and then this goes up here, and then this component goes here. So this component will actually attach to our um, loop end here, and it's gonna become the focal point, the actual pendant of this piece. So I made a loop with you know my super duper mandrel pliers here, um, just made a bigger sized loop. Or you can go really far down on your round nose pliers to also achieve the same effect. And um, just made a nice big size simple loop. And then I just made a small petite one for the other end. So that's one component. I'm gonna go ahead and attach that Oops, to my link here. So just open that right up. Just fold it out toward you, slide in your component and then flip it back down. But you can already see that my component needs to lay, again, perpendicular loop-wise in order for it to lay flat. All right, so now I'm going to attach my rose bead to that link. And then I'm going to attach my dragon pendant here at the bottom. Perfect. So this should all face now the same direction. It's going to lay flat, flat-ish, I guess. The rose is gonna add some extra dimension to it. But you can see that because I've had my loops in the same facing direction, it's going to all lay in the same um, format whenever I've attached it all together. So something to keep in mind as you're building this. now. I think I have this guy connected to this. So I'm going to grab my two millimeter crimps, where they go, here they are. Just gonna grab one of those and I'm just gonna do a little crimp here. So I'm gonna string my crimp on. String this on and then go back through the crimp. And I think I'm gonna use my magical crimpers. Have you guys used these before? If you have, let me know if you've had a good experience or a bad experience with them. Um, I feel like Softflex, the ladies over at Softflex use them a lot. I used to hate them, but now I, I think they're freaking awesome. Um, it alleviates having to use a crimp cover which can be also a giant fail if you do it wrong. <laughs> and I have before, um, but I like using the magical crimpers personally. The trick really is to make sure you have the right crimps and the Softflex ones work amazingly with them. And to make sure that the crimp is completely packed with silver, or to, excuse me, with Softflex wire. So I went through it twice, but I'm gonna go back through it again, as you can see. So I've got three strands of Softflex wire running through it. So if you're making a ravioli, you want it to be really stuffed because we loved 
stuffed raviolis. And we want to make sure that we're getting our full meal from this one crib. I don't know where I was going with that. It just sounded kind of funny. So I was like, you know, I'm going to commit to it. Ah, Sue says she loves the magical crimpers now that she understands what to do with them. Yeah, half the, half the work with this is just the education, right? Making sure that the tools um, do what they're supposed to do whenever you've practiced enough. <laughs> Leanne says, I use a magical crimper, still mastering it though. Yeah, it is, uh, I've made, even whenever I've had a good, I don't know, I feel like a good use out of them, I still have like managed to somehow mess up the crimp. So it's always a learning process. In this case, I actually did it pretty well. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with it, but it's only got the one notch and you kind of just go, Press it once to get a four-cornered pillow, and then you kind of just turn it on its side and just continue to crimp over and over until it becomes a little ball. And uh, it just—it looks highly decorative, and it's very secure. But because again, I've you know put three strands of soft flex wire through it, so I know it's really packed and safe. Hi, Gail. I don't think I got to say hi to you earlier, but I'm glad you've tuned in and um, watching the video and hanging out with us. And Tammy, hi. <laughs> she says, I've had epic failures now and there with three strands and must have um, the soft flex bead crimps. Yeah, it really is just, uh, it depends I think on the crimps and how many times you've actually stuffed it through. So I can relate to that. All right, so there it is. That's the first part of our clasp here or for our focal area. Um, I'm going to open up that bigger, the bigger simple loop, find my words here, and um, just attach it to our loop here, like that. So now you could see that this is really kind of coming through. There we go. And then now the last part is to crimp our button in. And part of this is making sure that it's all well balanced. So. I think in order for these components to lay correctly and to lay, you know, a certain width apart, I'm gonna need to add a few extra crystals to kind of widen the gap here. So let's see, I think I measured it out five. So let's just string on five and then we're going to string on a crimp and see if everything is working correctly. Um, because I can always take it off of the beading wire and readjust accordingly because it's not crimped yet. Okay, so I'm going to push it through my button. I'm sure you guys have a ton of different buttons out there. It doesn't even have to be Tierra cast, but um, I think the principle and the takeaway for this design is that you can repurpose some of your components in your stash to make something different and cool. Very cool. So it looks like this is working pretty well. I kind of wish this were just a tad bit longer. And I think it's because I'm OCD about these two lining up perfectly. So let me see if I can actually do maybe one more crystal and then I think we're ready to crimp. And uh, by coincidence, I think I've used up all my crystals, which is great. They found a new home in a new design. <laughs> All righty, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and crimp it onto here. I don't think I've done a solidly blue piece up to this point. This is like my first true blue piece. Uh, Gail says um, she's got a whole collection of buttons. Yes, so I'm hoping that this design and this format of it's because of how unusual and cool it is. Maybe you'll find some uh, cool uses for your buttons, Gail. Okay, again, I want to stuff it three times, so I'm just going to trim off right there and um, go in. Let's go in through this side. Okay, again, stuff that. Crimp. That is the best way to ensure that you have got 
a really good thing happening here. So again, I'm just gonna go in. It really does have to be inside of that circular notch too. And just go back in and press, and you should get something that looks like this. Whoops, you get back on camera here. And uh, you can see that the four corners are slightly pinched in, which is a good sign. And then go in and work it around and around inside of your notch of your pliers. You can test this just by tugging on it. If nothing is coming apart, um, then we're in good shape. And I'm not embarrassed while on camera. <laughs> Let's go back in and trim it. And now I've got a pretty good looking clasp there. The only thing that might worry me just a little bit is um, I might have to go back and readjust the size of this loop to become a little bit smaller, but I'm gonna hang it off of something to see. You can already tell it's kind of, it probably does need to be a little bit smaller, which is good. I can demonstrate this for you guys. How many of you know how to take stuff out of a crimp, out of a silver silk end cap. If not, you're in the right place. I'm going to teach you how to do that. There is a little bit of waste involved, but you can repurpose these crimps with no problem. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually go in, really grasp one of those sides with my chain nose pliers, and I'm just going to gently tug against the end cap and try and get some of that wire out. So this sort of forces all of that stuffing to come out. It still has a little bit inside, but we can get that out very easily. I'm just gonna use a pair of thinner uh, chain those pliers and widen my end cap there just a little bit. And now I can make the adjustments that I need to, to shorten this. Okay, so let's go down a couple of these. I'm gonna trim that little end off with some heavier cutters. Okay, remember to get those fuzzies out as best as you can. There's always gonna be maybe a couple, but for the most part, if you can get most of them out, that is a, that's gonna make your crimping a whole lot easier. Okay, you can see how much of those came out actually. And now I can go back in. Push it back into my end cap. And then I'm going to use a pair of uh, these flat nose pliers that have been dipped in tool magic. They've dried overnight and have become a rubberized tip. So this is perfect for really grasping the end cap. Oops, you know what? I didn't push this in all the way through. Let me open that back up. Oh, you know what's another good tip, you guys? I don't know if I've got any wire out here with me, but I can use, yeah, I do. You can hold all this together with just a piece of wire while you crimp. So let me get a piece of wire out here and I'm gonna go in about two beads below the chain and just string it right through. So now that my um, chains are aligned here, I can go back in and really press on that crimp and know that nothing hopefully will fall right through. Let's see if we can do this. Perfect. Okay, that was actually one of my 10 technical tips in the blog of my website, silversilkonline.com. And um, I cover quite a few tips for better silver silking. So that is looking better. And I'm just needing to connect this. You know, the other thing I wonder I could, if I could do is, I wonder if I could connect it to this thing instead. 
I might have to kind of shift this around, but let me let me do some experimenting here because the weight is on this actual pendant. Okay, so I can either connect it to that silver silk loop, or if I'm wondering if I can connect it to this, maybe it'll um, kind of tug on something else while it's way down. Ah, there we go. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Okay, let me get a neck form here because that's really what's gonna seal the deal. All right. This is like my favorite part when everything comes together and I can actually show you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my camera view around real quick and show you guys how cool is that. Just a really different, fun way to wear it. It all works together beautifully. Um, a little bit of a switch there on my component piece, but I love that these two are lining up and I've got some beautiful asymmetry that's really working it and bringing it all together. So I'm sorry if that's like a, there we go. It's like a glare to it. <laughs> But you can really see that that's, um, that's a really stellar piece. So I love it. It's a great way to wear it. You don't need a clasp in the back um, to make this piece work. I'm actually going to try it on myself. There we go. Perfect, right? I love this. So I'll bring it back down on camera. In fact, so you'd have to see my horrible background there. <laughs> fun piece though this is definitely going into my catalog of favorite pieces though so i hope you guys will give it a try because i enjoyed making this design um, again you can check out beadshop.com or beadplace.net for um, some of these components or maybe you just happen to have a bag full of stuff like i do um, that you don't know what to do with, and you can definitely, yes, Ginger, I do have a tank top on. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can repurpose some of those elements and beads and um, come up with a really cool design. Um, and if you happen to use Silver Silk, come join the Silver Silk Silkies. We're a fun, fun group of crazy but excitable people that love to use Silver Silk in our designs. And um, I love talking with you guys on there catching up with you and seeing what beautiful works you're making so oh we got <laughs> we got some people drooling but i don't know if that's over the piece hopefully that's over the design and not me wearing a tank top so i'm just saying <laughs> um if you want to check out some of the products you can go to silversilkonline.com i've got a wide assortment of all kinds of yummy goodies that you can um create with and uh, I carry currently over 12 colors of the hollow mesh and river, which is what I use tonight, is just one of them. <laughs> there he answers both. <laughs> oh, you guys, making me blush here. Kinda, can you see it? Can you see the blush? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to shake it, Ginger. You are too much, girlfriend. Too much. <laughs> All right. Well, if you have any questions, you can email me at orders at silversilkonline.com. I do these things, let me show you, every Tuesday at 3.30 Pacific time or 6.30 Eastern time, depending on if you're East or West Coast. I am actually in the central region of America. And so I've got, um, I'm on uh, central time. And so 5.30 is my particular time. And I had mentioned already the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group page. Um, so go find us there. You can um, definitely come in and join and post your creations, post um, if you are a business that carries Silver Silk, um, please post kits and stuff that you have there that use um, some Silver Silk perhaps. And uh, I think it's just a fun way to share what everyone has talent wise. And what else do I have to say? Ah, if you're over on YouTube, which some of you, some of you are um, from YouTube, and some of you are not, but if you're not, 
um, definitely find me on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. And there you get a giant library of all the designs I've made up to this point for Silver Silk. Um, and I've also sort of bucketed everything in the playlist. So if you're looking for just Capture Chain projects, you can check out that playlist for all of the Capture Chain projects that I've ever done. Um, this whole year has sort of been about Hollow Mesh, and so I'm sort of building that catalog as we do this. Um, lastly, on the website, the blog is a very important part for learning and education. So you can um, go to silversilkonline.com, click on the blog link, and then there you can find some really great resources for better silver silking or um, some tutorials perhaps that you're wanting to try out for yourself. All right, you guys. This has been a fabulous evening. I actually have to go and get my workout pants on so that I can hit the gym and um, make sure that I'm always tank top ready. So <laughs> I wish you guys all a fabulous evening. Hi, Brenda. Look, we're going to twin one day because I've got my tank top on, the stripy black color, but do you? I don't know. We're going to have to do a video together to see um, if we can coordinate all this and do a cool project together. All right, I love all of you, and um, I will see you again on Tuesday. I have no idea what we're gonna make, but we're gonna make something fabulous and very cool, um, and I shall post it about it here soon. I'm working on the orders as, um, as quickly as I can for the workshop kits. Believe it or not, you guys have sent me behind on orders because you love Silver Soap so much, so um, I'm doing my best to play catch up here, and I appreciate your patience in not only me packaging it, but also the shipment and hi. I know that takes a long time and I know you guys are eager to create, but again, appreciate your patience for all of those things. Okay, I love all of you. I hope you have a fantastic evening and I will see you, whether it's in the Silkies group or another Tuesday tutorial. Mwah! Big hugs, you know, I love to give digital hugs. So I'm saying big hugs, happy evening, and I will talk to you again very soon. Mwah.